Danielle, tell us about your farm and who are you? Uh, my name is Danielle Allen and um, my husband Ben, Dana and I um, own and operate this organic farm and we are on 28 acres. We're located in Fairleigh, Vermont and um, it's a very diverse operation. We grow over a hundred different varieties of vegetables. Um, and you are an organic farm, is that right? Yes, correct. So what does that mean? Well, uh, to me it means that um, we focus on building our soils through adding organic matter with um, compost and using cover crops to build our soils. So we really focus on the health of our soil, on crop rotation, um, uh, and in terms of you know trying to deal with pests and diseases, we're we're always rotating crops um, as opposed to you know using synthetic fertilizers to build the soil or build the you know nutrition for plants. We're we're really focused on the soil. So okay, yeah. so that's your first crop. The soil is yeah, your first crop. Right, that's a good way to think about and it. And then secondarily, it's tomatoes and other things that right. we're seeing. So a couple of things. What kind of soil is on your farms? Um, we're very blessed with um, a, a, a fine sandy loam here. Um, we're right at, uh, again, right next to the Connecticut River. Okay. So we're in floodplain area. Um, you know, so the farm, as I think you got a good view of before, has several different terraces down to the river, right. and so uh -huh. there are different ages of where the river used to flow, and so we have this incredible soil for growing um, vegetables and produce. I mean, it's really the best that we could ask for. So. And you mentioned before that you really think of your farm as a system in trying to keep organic matter in, for example. So what are some ways that you, compared to maybe a large-scale commercial farm, try to keep more of your organic matter here? Yeah, we have our own sort of small-scale composting operation here. Um, and we so we take all um, plant matter that we're taking out of the fields, goes to this compost pile. Um, we also add chicken manure. We have our own flock of chickens, so we'll put their bedding and all their chicken manure in, and that heats it up and gets it going. So, um, so And yeah. then once that is nicely degraded, what yeah. do you do with that? We will, once it's gone through a cycle of, you know, we keep track of the temperatures and it has to be um, composting for a certain duration, and then we'll spread it in our fields. Um, and then plant and then you know after a certain duration as well. So, so you keep track of temperatures so for example it'll kill weed species so you're yeah. not reintroducing weeds to that your... That is the goal, to yeah. Your, okay. Yeah, and other pathogens too. Just But so, it's yeah. probably rich in NPK or certainly in nitrogen. It's probably yeah. really rich in yeah, nitrogen, Yeah, we right? always soil test before we spread so we have some understanding of, of what we're what using. <laughs> yeah. That sounds great. So tell us some of the crops that you grow. Uh, well, you can see tomatoes. Is, okay. um, we, we grow tomatoes under cover, the cover of a high tunnel in this climate that helps us um, tremendously with just keeping the um, foliage healthy. And um, so we grow lots of tomatoes. It's a very popular crop. <laughs> Everyone loves tomatoes. We grow a lot of carrots. Um, we, these soils are, are very um, the fine Conducive. sandy loam yeah, makes it no good rocks for and the carrots to push their way down. Yeah, so we can grow beautiful carrots here. Okay. Um, what else? Um, potatoes? Potatoes, beets, uh, <laughs> broccoli, broccoli ca cabbage, cauliflower, uh, lots of different lettuce mixes and arugula, salad greens, and herbs. Um, it's so diverse because we offer our products for sale through a CSA and so we're always planting successions of crops to have available every week, you know, a nice diversity. So CSA is Community Supported Agriculture, yep. and people essentially subscribe to your farm like you subscribe to a newspaper. Yep, exactly. And you get something every week? Each week, yeah. Each week we, pa we pack a box, and it's the best of our harvest from that week, you know, the best of, from the fields. And we do a lot of planning work over the winter to determine, you know, a good diversity that, that'll be ready each week. So you're not just getting carrots every week, you get... <laughs> A good mix, yeah. yeah. Well, thanks, Danielle. It's been great talking to you. We've enjoyed being able to use your farm. And when I go to a farm to visit, I always bring two things. I don't know if you know what they are. I always bring a knife. Yep. That's an important I've thing to have. You've two. got yep. one too. <laughs> and I always bring some salt uh -huh. because, with your permission, <laughs> I think I'd like to have a tomato. Would that Please, be okay? Yeah. <laughs> this one right here looks like a real good one to take. <laughs> so, um, will you uh, have some with me? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Let's, uh, I should give this to you and <laughs> we'll break into this tomato. I'm not sure it's perfectly ripe, right. but I think it'll be pretty good. So, 
I'm looking forward to some of this. Do you mind? Not at all. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Mm. Very good. Let me give you a piece. Thanks. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Enjoy. You probably have had a lot of tomatoes today already. This time of year, I'll take it. <laughs> what about somebody else? Anybody else want tomato? Oh, here we go. People are... All right. I guess we're done, huh? <laughs>